Today's reading of Anne Frank's diary begins on page 41. Page 41. In the true spirit of the annex, I should talk to you about food. Every day, Mr. Kleinman meets a secret baker and buys two loaves, but the price goes up each time. Of course, we don't have as much as we did at home, but it is enough. We have about 100 cans of food stored in the annex, but mostly our supplies include cabbage, meatloaf, and pickles. Page 42. And then there's the beans. We must have 300 pounds of them all stored in sacks. Do you know how much gas one person can produce from 300 pounds of beans? The beans were hanging all over our living space, so we decided to move them to the attic. Page 43. But one sack broke and a flood, or rather a hailstorm, of brown beans went flying through the air and down the stairs. It made enough noise to raise the dead. At first, we thought we were being bombed. We had to pick up every single bean. You never know how desperate you might become for one tasty bean in the future. Page 44. Tuesday, November 10th to Thursday, December 19th, 1942. Dear Kitty, yesterday father gave me some great news. My darling, we are planning to rescue another Jew who will stay with us in the annex. He will have to sleep in your room, Anne. Of course, Daddy, I'll do whatever it takes to save one more life. But after father left, I realized that I would have to say farewell to the privilege of being alone with you, Kitty, whenever I want to. My new roommate is named Mr. Albert Dussel. He is Miep's dentist. I don't know what to do. I must find a place to hide. I might have a solution for you. Just don't pull out all my teeth. Three days later, Mr. Dussel arrived at the annex. He brought all his dental tools. Otto, Frank, I don't believe it. I thought you'd escaped with your family to Switzerland. In that case, our trick worked. Later on, Margot and I took a peek at his tools. Oh dear, that is frightening. Let's hope he has some laughing gas too. Page 45. I have prepared a brochure for Mr. Dussel to explain the regulations at the annex. Price free. The secret annex, a unique facility for the temporary accommodation of Jews and other disposed persons. Location, beautiful, quiet, wooded surroundings in the heart of Amsterdam. No private residences in vicinity. Food, low fat only. Breakfast, 9 a.m. In silence, excluding weekends. Lunch, 115 to 145. In silence, excluding weekends. Dinner, depends on the news broadcasts. During mealtimes, no German stations allowed. Alcohol, for medicinal purposes only. Pets, only in the attic. Baths, at your own risk, at nighttime or on weekends. Page 46. Mr. Dussel has told us much about the outside world we've missed for so long. How much for a family of five Jews? 15 guilders per head. Go to number 15, third floor, left door, five heads. It's like the slave hunt of the olden days. In the evenings when it's dark, I often see long lines of good innocent people accompanied by crying children walking on and on until they nearly drop. No one is spared. The sick, the elderly, children, babies, all are marched to their death. Page 47, November 20th, 1942. Dearest Kitty, we don't really know how to react. Up until now, very little news about the Jews had reached us here, and we thought it was best to stay as cheerful as possible. Every now and then, Miep used to mention what had happened to a friend, and Mother or Mrs. Van Don would start to cry, so she decided it was better not to say any more. But we bombarded Mr. Dussel with questions, and the stories he had to tell were so gruesome and dreadful that we can't get them out of our heads. Once we've had time to digest the news, we'll probably go back to our usual joking about those who are gone. Sorry, 
Once we've had time to digest the news, we'll probably go back to our usual, usual joking and teasing. It won't do us or those outside any good if we continue to be as gloomy as we are now. And what would be the point of turning the secret annex into a melancholy annex? No matter what I'm doing, I can't help thinking about those who are gone. I catch myself laughing and remember that it's a disgrace to be so cheerful. But am I supposed to spend the whole day crying? No, I can't do that. This gloom will pass. Added to this misery, there's another, but of a more personal nature, and it pales in comparison to the suffering I just told you about. Still, I can't help telling you that lately I've begun to feel deserted. I'm surrounded by too great, by too great a void. I never used to give it much thought since my mind was filled with my friends and having a good time. Now I either think about unhappy things or about myself. It's taken a while, but I finally realized that father, no matter how kind he may be, can't take the place of my former world. When it comes to my feelings, mother and Margot ceased to count long ago. But why do I bother you with such foolishness? I'm terribly ungrateful, Kitty, I know. But what I've been scolded for the umpteenth time, and I have all these other woes to think about as well, my head begins to reel. Yours, Anne. Page 48. Thursday, December 10th, 1942. Dear Kitty, at last, after six months in the annex, I've discovered the one thing Mr. Van Don is good at. It happened one day when Mr. Kleiman arrived with a grin on his face. Look what a deal I got on the black market. Isn't he past his expiration date? It's a she, Daddy. Finally, after six months, this is a dream come true. Mr. Van Don was hired for his knowledge of spices, and yet to our great delight, it's his sausage tail instead of come in handy. He likes to eat them too. Using my secret spice blend, we'll have enough to live for longer than the hundred years war between England and France. I can't keep stirring the soup, my back aches. Well, maybe he shouldn't have grown such a fat behind since arriving here. Didn't Napoleon die from eating too much preserved meat? He did, but that's because the poor man didn't have my secret formula. Page 49. It was obvious that poor Herman Van Don was grabbing far too much attention, so much so that the two ladies of the annex had to react. Considering our diet, it's about time we had our first dental treatment. Any volunteers? Me, of course. But of course, who else? Wow, you have two cavities. We could hide another Jewish family in them. I'd rather have surgery than save another family. Figures. As disinfectant, the finest perfume in the world. After a great deal of squirming, kicking, and screaming, the job was done. I must say that the patient showed the utmost bravery. Madame was soon back at work in the kitchen, but one thing is certain, it'll be a while before she makes another dental appointment. Page 15. Sunday, December 13th, 1942. Yesterday afternoon, while Margot and I were bathing in the office, I peered out through a chink in the heavy curtains. Don't get too close to the window. The children in our neighborhood are so dirty, you wouldn't want to touch them with a barge pole. What if I took a fishing rod and reeled in each of those kits, stuck them in the tub, washed and mended their clothes? And then tomorrow they'd be just as dirty and tattered as they were before. Page 51. Then it started raining hard, and all I could see was a sea of umbrellas. But now I can recognize the women at a glance. Gone too fat from eating potatoes, dressed in a red or green coat and worn out shoes. Then something extraordinary happened. I recognized two Jews I knew from our old neighborhood. I felt as though I were gazing at one of the seven wonders of the world. Which wonder would you give up to save the Jews? Probably the lighthouse. We won't be rescued by a boat anyway. It gave me such a funny feeling as if I denounced them to the authorities and was now spying on their misfortune. Page 52. Tuesday, December 22nd, 1942. Dear Kitty, my new roommate gets more exasperating and egotistical as the days go by. He switches on the light at the crack of dawn to exercise. 
Must you exercise so early? But of course, it's the best time of day, the golden hour. Shh, the enemy is near. But in my dreams, there is revenge. Please let me in. I'm sorry, I won't do it again, Anne. What did you call me? I mean, your highness. Oh, I'm becoming so sensible. We've got, we've got to be reasonable about everything we do here. Studying, listening, holding our tongues, helping others, being kind, making compromises, and I don't know what else. I'm afraid my common sense, which was in short supply to begin with, will be used up too quickly, and I won't have any left by the time the war is over. Page 53. Sunday, sorry, Saturday, January 30th, 1943. Dearest Kitty, I'm seething with rage, yet I can't show it. I'd like to scream, stamp my foot, give mother a good shaking, cry, and I don't know what else because of the nasty words. Mocking looks and accusations that she hurls at me day after day, piercing me like arrows from a tightly strung bow, which are nearly impossible to pull from my body. I'd like to scream at Mother, Margot, and the Van Dons, Dussel, and Father, too. Leave me alone. Let me have at least one night when I don't cry myself to sleep with my eyes burning and my head pounding. Let me get away, away from everything, away from this world. But I can't do that. I can't let them see my doubts or the wounds they've inflicted on me. I couldn't bear their sympathy or their good humor derision. It would only make me want to scream even more. When everyone thinks I'm showing off when I talk ridiculous, when I'm silent, insolent when I answer, cunning when I have a good idea, lazy when I'm tired, selfish when I eat one bite more than I should, stupid, cowardly, calculating, etc., etc. All day long I hear nothing about what an exasperating child I am. And although I laugh it off and pretend not to mind, I do mind. I wish I could ask God to give me another personality, one that doesn't antagonize everyone. But that's impossible. I'm stuck with the character I was born with, and yet I'm sure I'm not a bad person. I do my best to please everyone, more than they'd ever suspect in a million years. When I'm upstairs, I try to laugh it off because I don't want them to see my troubles. Why don't you just wash your hands of me? I'm a hopeless case. Don't you ever talk to me like that again. What do you care? You're just going to ignore me for a week anyway. It's impossible for me to be all smiles one day and venomous the next. I thought I'd rather choose the golden mean, which isn't so golden, and keep my thoughts to myself. Perhaps sometime I'll treat others with the same contempt as they treat me. Oh, if only I could. Yours, Anne. Page 54. Why do you have to show off all the time? Can't you give us some help in the kitchen? The best thing for you would be to pray. For God's sake, Anne, I can't sleep. Margot would never do that. Don't panic. It's only bombs falling. Why can't you be more like your sister? Think how lucky you are. There are children dying out there. Page 55. Hair neatly brushed. Nose facing the earth with no snobbish remarks. Eyes wide open, smiling. Mouth and lips, constant grin. Posture, superb, dignified, and elegant. Dress, bright colors, showing optimism. Page 56. Wednesday, De sorry, Wednesday, March 10th, 1943. Dearest Kitty, we had a short circuit last night, and besides that, the guns were booming away until dawn. I still haven't got over my fear of planes and shooting, and I crawl into my father's bed nearly every night for comfort. I'm sorry. I'm so childish. Don't be sorry. Everyone in the annex has their fears. Madame's biggest fear is burglars. Herman, wake up. I hear footsteps downstairs. It's only your heart beating. And Peter's biggest fear is rats. It bit my hand off. The other annex dwellers all share one feel, one fear. I'm telling you, Anne will get us all captured. I agree. Her behavior is out of control. Oh, stop being so hard on her. Page 57. Friday, March 19th, 1943. Mr. Dussel is terribly sad because he misses his beloved Lochi so much. 
My dearest Albert, I feel so guilty about being Christian, living in safety as if nothing were happening. Start writing, Margo. My dear Lochi, if longing for someone can kill, I am a dead man now. He made me up and Bep play Cupid by delivering his letters to Lochi. But when father found out, Albert, don't you dare ever send letters again. If anyone found out, all eight of us would be dead. Margo, I'm surprised at you. I would not have expected this. Oh, but it was all for love. Well, at least being executed for the sake of love would be a good way to go. Page 58. Thursday, April 1st, 1943. Dear Kitty, at this critical time for Father's Company, three or four saviors are out of commission. Mr. Kleiman had to leave more surgery on his intestines. Had to have more surgery on his intestines. Beth has a terrible case of the flu and Mr. Vasco has an ulcer attack. Since everyone was ill, Mr. Kugler had a big day. He had to meet with a German delegation for a very important business transaction. You know I have complete trust in you. Pretend the leading actor is sick and this is your big break. Don't make me more nervous than I already am. To be or not to be, that is the question. We'll have to take shifts eavesdropping on the meeting here, like this. You must remember every word by heart. Can't we just write down what they're saying? No, they'll hear this pen scratching the paper. And we're going to stop there for today.